All right. Well, I think I'm gonna dial in pretty good. Um, we're running nice. Leaving a nice double back there. I gotta carry the head some. Um, if I get right down to the ground, you can see some green starting to come back in. And that green, I can't get out of the grain. You know, like a lamb's quarter, all that seed head of the lamb's quarter, most of that stuff will end up in the grain tank. And it'll have a hunt. You know, then you got the potential for heat. So this stuff's going to sit in the grain buggy for a couple days until the other field that we had to swap is ready to combine. I've got an air tube that I can screw into the grain pile inside the grain buggy and that will suck air through and uh, that will take that humidity right out of the beans. Tomorrow if it's drier, you just uh, Jeff can just turn it on and, and he'll, he'll, it works fantastic. We had a couple wagons for a guy we combined years ago and uh, by the end of the day, that same day, you could smell that green heat, that, that silage -y, that grassy silage -y smell. And uh, I put that fan, that screw in tube overnight and the next day you couldn't you, it was cold cold grain that had no smell and uh was going fantastic but yeah i'm just putzing along putzing along 3.9 um yeah it's, it's going good going good 8820 he's a wide body He's almost 70 inches wide on the cylinder. So that, that he's made to eat. For a 200 horsepower combine, he's made to eat. I can, uh, I, if this was clean, clean oats, I, I think I could take this to the ground at four miles an hour on 30 feet all day long. It's just a remarkable machine. John Deere used to do it right. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I take the, you know, like everything else, I walk behind the combine, we check how we're doing. Um, since there is no chopper behind there, we don't have to worry about seeds being blown. All our stuff is gonna be right here. So we, I just take this over the window and kind of bat it around and and uh, bring in other stuff and bat it around. And then we get down and we start crawling around the ground, making sure we're not leaving any. And uh, you know, there's a massive amount of holes, but uh, I think a chicken would starve out here. I'm not. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying. I think a chicken would starve. There's one. There's one. All right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. That is really good. Um. I'm super happy. Look at that straw. Pull that stem out. That went through the combine and uh, didn't even break the leaf off. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. That old machine. Man, oh man. It's too bad John Deere gave up on making a combine. That is that is pretty remarkable. Look at that. It didn't even it barely even broke it at the joint. That is that is gentle thrashing. Gentle thrashing. So anyhow, I'm gonna hop in the pickup, go get the grain cart so I can get calibrated and uh, get this field off for him. Boy, that ain't turning out too bad. Look at that clean oats, nice clean. I like to sift like that a couple times and you can see in your hands if you're getting dirt or anything like that, but on oats it should be pretty clean. Um, that is really looking nice. This is really, this is really starting out very good. Um, but yeah, got big blue. You're my boy, blue. It, uh, my 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 blue buddy. This will make nice. Then we'll just call in for a semi from the neighbor. Um, so my Pioneer Dealer Risk Farms you guys met this spring. They'll just send over a truck and truck it out of here. Um, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. Well, looks kind of pretty, guys. I like it. I really like it. I wish, uh, I wish all the oats in the area would have been able to straight cut because 30 feet at four miles an hour is a whole lot more relaxing than 17 feet at four and a half miles an hour and then worrying about that dummy head picking it up or not. Um, I forgot to, I kept the 17 foot pickup while I'm running the 30 foot head. So that pretty much makes the yield almost half. So this field, you know, in just under 60 bushels, so it's 54 bushels, 55 bushels um, to the field. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, we, we can live with that. Now, now we're going to see if we can't. Um, I'm going to talk to the farmer and see if he isn't willing to let's put a cover crop in here for corn next year to see if we can't produce a little nitrogen for sure because of water, hemp, and ragweed and all them issues coming in the area. Let's for sure douse this thing in cereal rye or winter rye so next spring you got a good bed to go into and we got some help with weed control. Um, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll go sweet talk him and, and be gentle and see if we can't persuade them. <sighs> but yeah, yeah, it's worked out worked out good. The other piece is right across the road there. It's already swathed. Now we're just waiting to give it a couple days to dry down. Um, but guys, I'm empty. Uh, I, I'm done here for the day. Now it's time to go back. I gotta go back to the farm and, and do some work. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's episode.